actually met it literally. Uh, I met this girl recently in Philly who was struggling with, um, uh, I guess, depression or something, and uh, she made an attempt at her own life, which was really, really awful, and it was, became like a public spectacle. They had the news wrote up about it, and she came to one of my shows, and she was just telling me how she's been in intensive therapy, and she really chose to live. It was like a big choice that she had to make, and, um, and she came to me and said one of the reasons uh, I got through it is because I was listening to, I forget which song it was specifically. And it's so funny to me because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, a lot of my songs, you know, I think particularly with this album, it definitely scratches the surface and they can cut a little deeper. Um, but at the end of the day, it is still pop music and it's supposed to be fun. So when you hear a song like that having such an impact um, in like a life or death situation, it's sort of surreal. But um, obviously, it, it's. I can't even describe what that feels like, you know? It, it feels nice to have such an impact and an influence on somebody to the point where it, it has saved their life, um, you know? So, that's pretty cool. Anybody else? Question? Yeah, what's up? My wife's been a fan since Scream 3. It's actually her birthday today. Would you sing a happy birthday? Uh, sure. What's your name? Roxanne. Roxanne? All right. Oh my God. Better film that. <laughs> happy birthday. To you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear Roxanne. sort of set the stage for Young and Hungry, um, which is another ABC Family show that I just did a few months ago, and 
Um, Greek was sort of my foot in the door with that network, and I think uh, it was really kind of the first time in a long time that I had done some molten some comedy. Um, and uh, for the most part, everyone on the cast was really cool. Scott, Mike, Scott Michael Foster, I think, was probably the coolest oh on, that, on that show. And, um, I still run into him and see him from time to time. He's a really good guy. Anybody else? Any question? Yeah. I had toured with the Backstreet Boys in 2005, so like almost 10 years ago, and uh, it was right during my first album, and we did a European tour, and um, so I kind of already had a rapport with them, and uh, I guess last year they were doing a big reunion, and I was just about to release my first EP, and um, they called and asked if I would come out with them, and uh, you know, knowing those guys and how nice and cool they are, sometimes you know, when you're an opening act for a tour, it can be miserable depending on who it is you're playing with. But I happen to know that those guys are really cool guys, so um, they were a lot different. In 2005, they were a bunch of party animals, and now they're all married and they're like changing diapers on the tour bus, and they're all like married, you know, guys. So it was a different dynamic, but really still just super nice guys, every one of them. So it was a lot of fun. You guys want to hear another song? Yes! You want to hear it? A little leave-in? Shake. It's over. Because you lit. I think he's performing that tonight. He's doing a lot of old ones. He's doing a lot of old ones. I'm not the scared that I'm blind for me. Used to tell myself she was super blind for me. But then I saw her at the corner store. So I ran. Everybody on the bus was drinking it, like we brewed half of it last night, and I've been drinking it all day. It's probably my favorite. Okay. Yeah, Kuro. So good. Yeah. Who are some of your inspirations uh, to be, uh, doing music? Um, I, I grew up listening to a lot of, you know, pop music and uh, a lot of soul music. The first album I ever pulled out of my parents' collection when I was four years old, on my own, I discovered Elvis Presley. Woo! And I, you know, it was just so funny because I remember I seeing this guy on the cover of like this old 45 and he was, you know, he had blue suede shoes on. I was like, those are really cool. And he had like this sequin outfit. I'm like, who is this guy? And, uh, and I 
fell in love with, with Elvis Presley, Return to Sender, uh, Blue Suede Shoes, Jailhouse Rock. And I said to my mom, I was like, who is this guy? She's like, that's Elvis Presley. And it was a collection of over a thousand albums. I just liked the way he looked. And so I was like, yeah, I'll check him out. And then from there, I listened to a lot of um, Al Green and James Brown and Ray Charles and Smokey Robinson and Michael Jackson. And those are probably, they, those artists all, I think, sort of influenced me and made me kind of the singer that I am today. And I always lean towards soulful singing, I think, because of, because of those artists. So, yeah, let's do one more right here. Film or music? Um, it's you know I'm I'm very uh, I get bored easily, so I love doing <laughs> all forms of entertainment. I grew up on stage and theater, so for me it was about all forms of entertainment and every medium, whether it was writing, singing, or acting. So it's hard for me to really choose specifically, but um, I really give all of my time and energy to one thing at a time. So if I'm on tour, I'm not really distracted by anything else. But making a film, that's all I do. I don't really even pick up my phone. Like, I'm just all about whatever it is that I'm doing, so. It'd be unfair to really choose one, but right now I think this album is definitely taking the, the forefront of my, of my career, the front seat. But you guys want to hear one more song? Woo! Yeah, super bad? Yes! Let's do it. She's a miracle, she can get her brain talking, she don't care at all. Watch the way she's walking, she's a fancy girl. Got danger in a touch, she should come with a woman when she strips herself.